Nice course and angler. Um, lots of people have been asking me what gear do I need to go ras fishing? So I thought it was a good idea to do just the basic gear that you need to get you started to have a go. So the rod. You need a rod rated at 10 to 30 grams. I wouldn't go any lower than 21 gram rated rod. You can go higher. Brass will take you by surprise. They are powerful fish and they love to get down into that kelp. A reel, you want a 3,000 to 4,000 size reel. You want that loaded with 20 pound braid, give or take a bit. Attached to that, you want a fluorocarbon or mono leather. Uh, the length is up to you. If you're fishing outside of the eyes, your leather length I .e. isn't inside the eyes. You can use a uni to uni, or as they call it, grinner to grinner knot, uh, to attach, and that's not going to catch in your eyes. If you're fishing your leather in your eyes, you want a long leather for some reason, then I suggest you learn the FG knot. It's not as hard as it looks. Onto that leather, we pass a Texas weight. So it's a cone sinker, lead weight, or an egg weight. Next, we have a bead, and then a really important part for wrasse fishing is an EWG weedless hook. Now why is that so important? As it says, it allows you to rig your lures weedlessly. When we're wrasse fishing with this Texas rig, this is called, I wouldn't suggest you use anything but that to start off with. You're pulling your gear through kelp, rocks, and all sorts and you don't want a hook point exposed, it will catch in everything. You will lose gear anyway, don't be upset if you do because that's part of the game, but it's limiting your losses. So, so there's the rod, there's the reel, there's the line, there's the leather, the weight, the rig, the hook. What do we stick on the hook? Well, I'd suggest to start off with, you can stick any soft plastic lure you want, but you want lures in the range of three to five inches. I'd suggest very basic, but very effective, a Senko. That will catch you any wrasse going. That happens to be a five inch one. Bog standard is four inches. You can buy these wonderful things all over the place, but AGM uh, do some wonderful uh, Senkos. That's AGM discount fishing online. I would also suggest you have a Shadler. So this is a paddle tail. That's another thing they're called. This is a little fish imitation. This is a dieward duck fin. It's about four inches long. Very effective lure. And I would also suggest you get a craw irritation lure. Now you perch fishermen, you probably got all of these already in your bag. This is a Z-Man Punch Craws in uh, blue colour. Uh, yeah, it's about four inches long. So if you had those three baits, and if you won't get them in different colours, because colour does make a difference, you could go wrasse fishing and you have a good chance of catching a wrasse. So once you've got your baits, so in this case a Senko, how do we mount them on our EWG hook? All you do is get the point of the hook and push it into the top of the middle of the bait. Push it in so it's central, about the same depth as this part of the hook, which I call the hook keeper bit. Then you pull it out of the belly of the bait and slide it up and over the hook keeper section and twist the bait so it's the right way around. Then we mark with our thumb where the bend of the hook is here and we place the hook point straight through the middle of the belly of the hook so it comes out in the middle of the top of the bait. You see in this case this bait has a bit of a recess I could probably use a bigger hook with this. That is a Texas rig bait sat on a Texas rig. But what we need to do is to expose this hook point and that basically is put a bit of plastic over the end of it. So to do that, we just pull the bait towards the eye of the hook and drop it back over the point of the hook. And then that hook point is not gonna snag. Just check it in between casts, save you a lot of gear. When the fish bites, it bites down like that, exposing the hook point, you strike, set the hook, all's good. But what are you gonna do when you catch that grass, how are you going to land it? It's an important question. If you try lifting fish with these kind of spinning rods that we use, you can snap the end of your tip, your rod, quite easily. You can also pull the hook too hard in the fish's mouth and rip its mouth, or the fish can just shake off as you're trying to lift it out. So I would seriously suggest you invest in a landing net. It doesn't have to be this one. 
Uh, this is a Daiwa ISO uh, rock landing net handle with a Shakespeare Agility rubberized net on the end. I suggest you get an extendable handle net if you want, for several reasons. The reasons I just spoke about looking after the fish in your rod, but you want to think about looking after yourself. You don't want to be too near the water unless you really have to. Or if you're somewhere where you don't need a net, you can hand line them. Okay, most places we fish, it's better to have a net and it's better to have an extendable net. This one is 5.9 meters, believe it or not. You don't need to always have one that long. I suggest something around three meters. So you got your net, you got your rod, your reel, your line, your rigs, your your baits, you want a hat, some sort of sun protection. You don't have to have this, this is a fishing shirt with uh, sun protected. But another major piece of kit you want, and that's for fish spotting or feature spotting if you can't see the fish, are some Polaroids. These are some clip over Polaroids made by a company called Eye Level. They make all the difference. They cut out all the glare on the surface. You'll be able to see where the rocks and structure are that you want to be fishing to. It will also help you avoid casting to structure that you can't pick out without these on and really snagging up on that. It will save your lures, it will catch your fish and it will protect your eyes. So a nice hat, a nice pair of Polaroid sun sunglasses are very, very helpful. So that's it. I hope that was of help. Uh, I wanted to keep it fast, short and simple. I hope I've done that. I don't think I've missed anything else out. Uh, any comments or questions, let me know. Please like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And if you're really keen, hit the notification bell because it all helps me do things like this.